Now, to chair the discussions around uh, these presentations, I'd like to invite, please, Professor John Donoghue uh, from V Center for Bio and Neuroengineering, and Professor Nancy Ip from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology to come onto the stage, please, as well as all the speakers, if you would um, find your way back onto the stage, uh, to just run through a few of the key points in a very short amount of time, sadly. Uh, there's just not enough time, is there, to discuss everything that we've touched on. But um, let's hope that we can hear from all of you once again, at least. Coffee break coming up shortly. Thank you very much. Well, it's a, a great pleasure to uh, co-chair this uh, panel discussion along with John Donahue. Uh, because of the time uh, limit, we probably have only one question to ask. So, <laughs> <laughs> so first, I think a big uh, thank you to the distinguished uh, panelists uh, for sharing your insights on the major brain project. And as you have heard, you know these uh, brain projects uh, have uh, different approaches, which can be complementary. And uh, also, um, you know, there are some that uh, have very clearly uh, similar objectives. So uh, the importance of international collaborations have been mentioned in all the presentations. So we thought a key question for the panel is, how can uh, international collaboration uh, facilitate the achievement of the uh, project objectives uh, in order to obtain synergy uh, among these uh, initiatives? And uh, since a high level of co coordination is required, I mean, what kind of effective mechanism uh, can we put in place to facilitate international collaborations? And I thought maybe I would invite uh, uh, Henry to mention, because in your presentation, you, you clearly uh, talk about the collaboration you have with the Allen Institute. Well, I think that to be pragmatic, we're going to have to let collaboration emerge. I don't think that it's something that we could sit down today or even over the next few years and say, okay, we're going to do that and so on. I think that's going to emerge. And um, the Human Brain Project had the idea that we need to provide a technology framework for collaboration, where things can be done more systematically and data can be shared in, a, way, in a, a general way. I personally think that one of the most important things that we should do before we begin, before we take off even further than we have already, is to establish a global consensus on the ethics of where we're going. I don't believe we should do things at all costs. I think we need to know what those boundaries are, and we should have a global consensus about those boundaries. We should have a handicap to solve these problems and not just solve them at any cost because we can do anything. Christoph, you want to add to that? Yeah, for, uh, from our point of view, the most important thing for collaboration is to make sure we can collaborate, which means that we can share data. So A, the data ought to be free, and B, we have to agree on standards. How do we represent an action potential? Everybody records action potential, but there are many, many different ways to represent them. And so if you have two experiments, you want to compare them, but they use very different systems, very different data formats, it's almost impossible to do that in practice. So there needs to be agreement on on, on data standards, on coordinate systems, right, for, for the different animals, how do we locate things? It's really critical that this work be done as soon as possible across the planet among the different initiatives. Maybe if we could shift the focus on not the, what are the problems, but actually the processes that we need to put in mm -hmm. place. Here we have representation from around the world. And uh, clearly, I just did a back of the envelope. Uh, there's going to be easily five billion spent in 10 years, it could invoke uh, 10,000 labs, six countries, counting Europe as a single country. And I think, <laughs> yep, uh, so it's, it's, it's a, but, but I, think, uh, I think all of us recognize the need for bringing this together. 
but what models do we have mm -hmm. or what processes can we bring into place to actually make this work? Can we create an organizational body? Can that kind of right. a structure work to try and make the world work together? And I think, Catherine, you, you've been dealing with some of these, and maybe you could comment on the, the ability to bring large groups of people together and, and the challenges that uh, are there. Yes, I, I think that uh, we have been doing that now for quite some time in different areas. And uh, the model that we have for our international cooperation works rather well. It's very flexible. Um, at some point, you need to sit down around the table and really roll up your sleeves and discuss what you want to do together. So you need to know what everybody is doing. So know well what is available and see where synergies and complementarities can, can, can be sought. And also very important to try and identify those questions that you want to answer together. Um, and then come, of course, the, 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 always the questions of uh, data sharing and how you do that and uh, um, deciding on the governance and the tools that you, you need to put in place. But I think we have good models already existing which are not necessarily exactly the same. They are targeted to the different areas. We have the very good in-beer um, collaboration ongoing. They are um, uh, discussing in depth how they want to share their data. It takes time. It's not done very rapidly. But I think, as it was mentioned, um, that these are things that have to be sorted out. But always keeping in mind what you want to achieve. So sitting the scientists together, agree on the commonalities, the common work, share the work, agree on who is doing what, and agree on the timelines, and, and then we can get down to really the, the work that has to be, to be done by each and every one. So Terry, you had yeah. some thoughts on how to make this work. We, as we discussed earlier, you had some... So uh, I, I have a very different view of this. I, I really think that uh, What's happening right now throughout the entire world is a, 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 an eruption of uh, interest in the brain. And it's happening simultaneously in all the different countries. For example, on Wednesday, a building was dedicated in London, which is funded by the Sainsbury Foundation, which is going to be a major new research uh, building for neuroscience. Uh, and there are buildings at other places, at MIT, that Allen, Institute for Brain Science just moved into a new building. And I think everybody is basically gearing up. We all know that in the next uh, couple of decades, there are going to be a fantastic discoveries that are going to be made. And I think that the, uh, the, you know, the official uh, cooperative agreements between the countries is something that will follow the, 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 the instincts of the scientists in terms of their internal collaborations within buildings, between uh, collaborations between labs across the world. So I, I actually think this is going to organically grow uh, from the bottom up. But nonetheless, it's important for the, the countries to help fertilize the research, if I could use that term, <laughs> with support and, 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 and to prevent blocks from happening so that we don't have the cross-border uh, conflicts between the different programs. OK, in terms of so internal collaborations, there are some many significances. Uh, because you know, many countries have some okay, um, focusing a little bit different model animals, okay, as a mouse, uh, macaque, and mouse, and human. And because such a uh, comparative neuroscience, very important to what is unique is in the human. You know? So uh, mouse by itself is not sufficient, mouse by itself is not sufficient, but through comparison, what we have uh, acquired during evolutions. That is a very important target of the diseases. You know, so such a, you know, international collaboration, sharing, and integration through the aspect of the evolution is very important to understand the human diseases. And that's one, one thing. And the other thing is that so, so to develop innovative technology can be common in many you know, so, uh, aspects okay, for calcium imaging or the voltage-sensitive sensor. And so these okay, will be shared in many animals, including shear guns to the hum human being. And the third point is that uh, there are many psychiatric neurological patients all over the world, but they have a little bit different genetic background. Even diagnosed as the same as a disease name, but there are some differences. To understand what's the genetic basis and epigenetic basis, neuroanatomical basis, very important to understand the nature of the disease and developing new therapy. That is very one of the significance to uh, promote the 
uh, global uh, uh, collaborations. So if, if I can just make a point about clinical research, I mean, uh, looking at all of these presentations on basic research makes me feel methodologically impoverished, but I'm sure we'll catch up because our substrate is probably the most important, maybe. But the, the collaborations we're talking about is essentially creative communication. It's useful to think about it as language. We need a common vocabulary, and I think Terry made the point earlier that, uh, it wasn't Terry, I think it might, it might have been Henry, who said that actual potentials are, are recorded in different ways. We've got to a point with the common data elements where the clinical data are increasingly recorded in a common way. But what would be useful is if regulatory bodies impose data standardization tools on imaging companies, on uh, diagnostic companies. So for Center TBI and Interpair in general, we've had to dumb down uh, imaging capacity so that there's a commonality between imaging platforms, which is not desirable. But even if we have that common vocabulary, we also need a common syntax. We really don't know how to ask, let alone answer the questions in clinical research in an effective way. And that methodological development, not so much new techniques, but the conceptual methodological development, trying to deal with how we relate such big data sets, and very importantly, how we relate it to preclinical data, which we never even thought would exist, like genetically modified non-human primates. But finally, we have to deal with the volition to use the vocabulary and the syntax to talk to each other. And that, I think, requires drivers that makes people understand that they're not going to be disadvantaged by data sharing, that every form of data sharing is a form of collaboration. We're used to sharing between two groups or three groups. There's really no reason to collaborate, uh, to restrict collaborations to two or three groups. We need to change people's mindsets so that collaborations can be global. And I think that's what's happening quite importantly over the last 10 years or so. So, Uming, yeah. Yes, I, I like to uh, know the one fact that the, uh, unlike the collaboration among many scientists uh, around the globe that has been going on for decades, in <coughs> fact, the new wave of interest is, from, is a bigger national, uh, on a national scale. I think the difference is that the nation, the leaders has recognized the importance of pushing uh, brain science and especially the application of brain science in, in, in human health and, and other you know, technology issues. So I think the, what, what uh, the, the situation now is that we have an opportunity that we are pushing ahead, we identify a, a, a problem that of international interest, global interest. For example, the, uh, the diagnosis and intervention of uh, brain disease, and put this as, as an agenda for the world, like the climate, uh, uh, the, the world, uh, global warning, uh, that everybody have really have put in effort, because this is the urgency for the, uh, for the global community to deal with this problem. And this may have to be done with it before we understand the brain. I mean, that's a, that's a, uh, a problem for centuries. So we, we think, the, uh, I think, this uh, new wave of uh, national interest or global interest is an opportunity. We identify the urgent problem like the global warming. We have uh, identified the brain disease as a problem. Every country at the national level should organize together. I, I see the opportunity in China, for example, uh, to standardize all the medical centers to have, to have to pull their data together, uh, put an international collaboration in a, in a bigger scale. Now, brain, traumatic brain injuries is a good example, but no, it has to be enlarged and, uh, and, uh, and put a, in a glo uh, more and more uh, more supports from the government, and I think that that's the advantage of these, these big projects. So if I may add that in September, there's going to be a presentation from the uh, international programs at a general assembly of the United Nations. So I think this will be a, a real event that will be picked up uh, by the national press and, and, and will really, uh, I think, uh, uh, announce the fact that uh, now this has become international and this is going to become top priority for, for the world, not just for uh, individual nations. Well, I think that's a, we're really running over time. We apologize, but I think the discussion has been very interesting. And I think particularly to, to start out uh, the rest of the conference by saying that the brain is a global initiative, <laughs> a global problem <clears throat> is exactly the way to end. So I, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for speaking today.